Alright, today I'm going to be showing you how to install Rail Pro into a locomotive um, in a couple of different ways. First, the easy way, which is, which is what this video will be talking about. And then the next video will be talking about more of a uh, complicated way, which is what I prefer to do in uh, most of my locomotive installs, just for my own reasons. For this simple install, what you're going to need is the locomotive. Here I have an Ather Genesis ES44AC, um, the new uh, Rail Pro module. This is the LM2S. You'll need a screwdriver to get the shell off. Uh, these come in handy as well for holding screws and things like that. The other thing that you will need for this is a soldering iron, which I don't have pictured here, and that is only to hook up the speaker wires to the actual speaker. You'll notice that I'm wearing um, nitrile gloves. This is my own personal preference. Whenever I'm handling a shell or um, a car or a locomotive that's unfinished, I'll uh, keep gloves on so I don't get fingerprints all over it because those are really a pain in the butt to uh, clean off later and get ready for weathering. But uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So looking at the Atherin model, you're going to notice underneath it, there we go, it's going to be a screw hole right here. And same on the other side, it's going to be right up in here. Those are the two that you need to get out. That holds on the body. I've already removed one of them to make this a little bit quicker. Get that one out. The other thing that you need to do is take off the coupler boxes pretty quick. And uh, make sure you don't get the screws mixed up. And there we go. That should be everything holding it on. So just gently kind of slide it off there. And there you go. So this is what is inside the Atherin Genesis, um, except for this speaker, I actually added that um, afterwards, I have not uh, soldered it on yet. But you'll notice they've got a 9-pin JST plug here, they've also got an 8-pin harness that you can use as well, um, and uh, you know, the standard Atherin 1.5 volt bulbs. This right here is a dummy plug, so you can you know take this and put it on a DC layout and run it. Uh, we're going to be using the 9 pin plug here uh, for the uh, Real Pro module. So you just pop that thing off and we'll open up the uh, package in here for the LM2S. This is what it has inside. This right here is the size of the module itself. So putting it up against the board here, it's really very small. It's not big at all. Um, you'll notice on the module itself there are two different ends. This one here is the one that plugs into the 9-pin JST. This side here um, is uh, another uh, plug that they include with it. Uh, two of the wires coming out of this side here are going to be for the speaker. Um, you've got uh, two more outputs on that side and you also have two inputs. And the inputs, uh, they're still kind of working on what they're going to use with those. But uh, basically to get this hooked up, take a module. You're going to line it up with the JST plug, make sure it's oriented correctly, and that's it. Okay. To hook up the speaker, you're going to take the six pin plug that they provide, plug it in here, and these two brown wires right here are the speaker wires. When you're using a single speaker, you know, this one right here doesn't have anything marked. If there's nothing marked as far as positive or negative, it doesn't matter. And really when you're using a single speaker, it doesn't matter anyways. And so either one of these can be soldered onto these two leads for the speaker and uh, you're good to go. So right there, that's how you install Rail Pro the easy way. Plug it into the JST harness and, and be done with it. All right, the LM2S is plugged in. I put the shell back on. I haven't attached the couplers or anything just yet, but I'm gonna walk you through how to uh, set it up. So I have here in my hand, this is the HC1 controller. Uh, the new model is the HC2. It's virtually the same, a few things different. Um, but the process is going to be the same on, on both of them. Um, so you know, turn it on, go to the main menu, and this is a new product. So you're going to want to uh, click on Find Product. It's going to search. Found it right there. Exit page. And then you're going to go into your locomotive list, and it's right there. 
it's the one that says no name. So click on that. That pulls everything up. And the first thing you're going to want to do here is name the locomotive. So you're going to click on name. This one's number is uh, BNSF 5862. Hit enter, and that'll automatically save it right there. And then if you click on this um, locomotive picture, that'll pull up uh, any files that you have loaded on there for the actual locomotive picture, which right now I don't have any. So to do that, you're going to go back to the main page. You're going to click on Tools, Update, and then you're going to Copy File. You're going to select the product that you want to copy to, and it's going to be BNSF 5862, which is down here. And I get to choose what I want to load on there. So right now I'll go ahead and load the picture. And I've already uh, downloaded it onto my uh, controller here. And there it is, BNSF ES44AC 5862. So I'm going to tap on that. And it's going to go ahead and load that on there. And you can do the same thing with sound, lighting, whatever. Um, the sound files usually take a little bit longer, particularly when you do the, uh, the prime mover sounds. Those take a good about 10 minutes or so to load on. They're, they're quite a large file. So that's there. Go back to the uh, locomotive page. And it's coming up with this uh, screen here because we haven't uh, changed anything yet on the buttons. But uh, now we can change the picture right there. And again, saves it automatically. Okay, so that's that. Now, when you go back out to the main page here for the locomotive, you're gonna notice right in the side here, it's got the uh, little caution icon up there. If you tap on that, it'll tell you what's wrong. And it says the motor full load current is not set. You're going to have this every time you install a new um, module. This is the very first thing you need to do to get the module actually set up. All right, to set the full motor load current, you're going to go to the settings tab right here, click on advanced setup, go to advanced to setup, and you'll see it right up here, motor full load current. You're going to tap on that. You do want to use the auto set. And it'll come up with a picture and it'll show you how it needs to be set up. So you hook just any freight car up behind it, whatever. And that's just holding the locomotive still while it tests the motor and how much current it's going to draw. So I've got my car back here. I'll just kind of hook it up, make sure that everything's steady, looks good. And then you need to hold it down with your hand when you do it. So I'll press start test, three, two, one. And 430 milliamps is what it gave me. And then save that. And that's it. And that's really the only setting you need to do in order to get this thing to run with any other locomotive that's Rail Pro equipped. All right, now we're going to go ahead and test the consistent ability of this locomotive. Again, the only thing I've done here is set the full motor load current, uh, which is what I had just shown you, and that's an automatic setting. So after that's done, this can run with any other Rail Pro equipped locomotive, and I'll show you how that's accomplished. So we're here on the locomotive screen. You're gonna wanna click on link right here at the top, and you uh, select the first locomotive in the consist, which in this case is our 5862 that we just installed it in, and that is right there. Select locomotive number two, which is BNSF 871, and then click Done. Okay. Click up here on MU, and you're gonna make sure the directions are correct, which they're not, so I'm gonna reverse the following unit, and there you go. So we'll test that out here. And off they go. And once again, I only set one thing, and that was the full motor load current, and that was an automatic setting. Now let's go ahead and reverse here, and do the same thing.
All right, now we're gonna go over how to load sounds and things like that. Um, the locomotive modules come with sounds already loaded on there. Uh, it's just a generic diesel sound. I wanna say it's the EMD 645 or, or something like that, but uh, regardless, you're gonna wanna change it out for the specific locomotive that you're trying to model. So for example, this one here, BNSF 5862, is an ES44AC, uh, one of the, the Jeevos. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and load that sound scheme on. So to do that, we need to get rid of what's ever on there right now. So you're going to go to the main screen here on the controller, press tools. Uh, you're going to go to update again, and then delete files. So you know, once again, select which locomotive you're going to want to delete from, and we are BNSF 5862. So let's uh, go to the sounds, and this is what's on there right now, you know, just generic diesel bell, horn, engine. We're going to want to get rid of the prime mover sound that they have on there right now. Deleting is pretty quick. You're going to want to do the same thing for uh, the horn. And you can leave the bell. If you go over to picture, it also has the generic ring engineering locomotive blue picture. Uh, you don't need that anymore. This doesn't take up much space, but you may as well just clean it up while you're here. And then we'll go back and copy files now to it. Once again, select the locomotive that we're working on, BNSF 5862, and we'll go to sounds. So this is the list of sounds that I have installed on my controller. Uh, these are ones that I have downloaded from the Ring Engineering website, and uh, I've got pretty much everything that they have on there right now. So we're going to move over until we get to the Jivo sound file, and there it is right there, Jivo. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and it's just going to sit there, and it's going to upload this. And like I said earlier, this does take a while when you are uploading a... Uh, a sound file uh, as large as the prime mover. So I'm just going to set it down right here next to the locomotive, give it about 10 minutes or so, and I'll come back and we'll finish up. Okay, we've got everything downloaded now to the uh, LM2 back at the main screen. We'll go ahead and click on locomotives, go back to our 5862 that we've been working on. Let's see if I can keep that glare off. All right, so let's go to the settings tab now and then to uh, change all the sounds you're going to go to buttons setup right down there and this is going to take you through all the buttons that would appear down here which is how you control all the functions sounds lighting all that kind of thing so we'll go back to uh, button setup alright and I'm going to work my way over to where the engine is and right there Okay. So right here, the name of the file that's configured to it right now is just the generic diesel engine. Uh, remember, I deleted that, and I uh, downloaded the Jivo sound, so we're going to click on that. And uh, that's what is now on the LM2S, these sounds. So I'm going to click on the Jivo sound file, and there we go. So that's there, and then if we go back to the screen, let's test it out.